Hi guys, welcome to this revision summary video looking at how you can figure out if something is ionic, covalent or metallic just by looking at data or by doing an experiment. So there are a few rules that can help you figure out what type of bonding you've got. The first one I always start off with is does it have a low melting point? If it does, every single time it's going to be a simple covalent substance. If not, it's either ionic, giant covalent or metallic. So the next thing, does it have a high melting point and doesn't conduct at all? If it doesn't conduct a solid or liquid, it's got to be giant covalent. Just remember there are a few exceptions for that, which are your graphite, your graphene and your nanotubes and your fullerenes. They will normally give you a clue in the question if it's going to be one of these four though. Number three, does it conduct when liquid, but not when solid? If that's the case, it's always ionic. Ionic is the only one that will conduct when liquid but not solid because the ions are now free to move. And then finally, if it conducts both as a solid and a liquid, it's going to be metallic. Just bear in mind those exceptions, graphite, graphene, nanotubes and fullerenes because they also conduct when solid and liquid. So let's have a look at an example table. If we start off with substance A, you can see we've got a low melting point and low boiling point. We don't need to look at any of the other properties. Straight away, I can say A is simple covalent. Substance B, it's got a high melting point and high boiling point, so we know it's not simple. We then look at the conductivity. It doesn't conduct as a solid. It doesn't conduct as a liquid. Therefore, it has got to be giant covalent. On to C. High melting point and boiling point again, so that rules out simple covalent. It doesn't conduct when solid, that rules out metallic. It does conduct when liquid, therefore the only thing it can be is ionic. And then finally, substance D, high melting point and boiling point. It conducts when solid and as a liquid, therefore it's going to be metallic. So how can we do an experiment to prove this or to find out what type of bonding is going on? I would always suggest your first step is to heat it up, whatever your substance is. If it melts pretty quickly, it's going to be simple covalent. If it doesn't, it's got a high melting point, so it's going to be ionic, metallic or giant covalent. If it's ionic, metallic or giant, find out whether it conducts as a solid. So put it into a power pack with a light bulb in if it conducts and the light bulb lights up, it's either going to be metallic or your exceptions for your giant covalents, which are your graphite, your graphene, your fullerenes, your nanotubes. If it doesn't conduct as a solid, it's going to be either ionic or giant covalent. Now, step three, to find out whether it's metallic or not, can it be hammered into shape? Can you bend it? Can you shape it? If you can, it's metallic. If it's brittle and snaps really easily, it's going to be your graphite or your graphene. And then all we're left with is ionic and giant covalent. So does it conduct electricity as a liquid, but not as a solid? So we've already said it doesn't conduct as a solid. All we need to do now is either melt it or dissolve it. Put it into a circuit with electrodes like your electrolysis. And if it does conduct, it's going to be ionic. If it doesn't, you're left with your giant covalent. That's all it can be. Hi guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please click on like down below. You can also subscribe to my channel, you can check out the latest video, and you can visit my website up above here. Bye now.